All right, folks, welcome back to Gun Owners Radio right here on FM 961. AM 1170, The Answer. Hey, did you know Firearm Policy Coalition is one of the key plaintiffs in Miller versus Becerra? The assault weapons lawsuit, well, Firearms Legal Coalition works on the state and federal level and have filed some of the most important Second Amendment lawsuits to date. Together, we are working on all levels to restore your gun owner rights. So we need you to join Firearms Policy Coalition now. You can become a member today by visiting their website, firearmspolicy.com. So you got some update on the... Dot org. Firearmspolicy.org. Oh, I'm sorry, firearmspolicy.org. Yep, they're awesome. Firearmspolicy.org yeah, they really is are. crucial. Um, they are on a uh, on a mission, um, and they've, they've been extremely supportive of San Diego County gun owners. Um, of course, Miller versus Becerra, we've talked about that. Miller versus Becerra is... Hopefully, going to get rid of the assault weapons ban. Hopefully. Hopefully. That's the idea. And uh, that full trial is going on uh, January 21st. So uh, we'll we'll let you know exactly what goes on there. But last week, they filed yet another lawsuit. Um, and this is, uh, people may be familiar, it's the Rena versus Becerra. Rena, R-E-N-N-A versus Becerra. And I'm just going to read a little bit. Federal Second Amendment and 14th Amendment lawsuit challenging California's recently expanded roster handgun ban which requires the removal of three firearms for everyone added as well as the ban on self-manufacturing handguns uh, not on the DOJ's roster so everybody knows you have to be on the roster to uh, to be able to sell a firearm in in California and they just expanded that they just changed that law a little bit um, to uh, they changed the requirement for the firing pin the serial serialized firing pin um, but it's still impossible to comply with. And if you add a, a firearm to the list, you have to take three off. And there's no real explanation as to how they determine which three. So really, in a way, you know, it was already kind of a, it was a de facto pistol ban. Not kind of. It was a de facto pistol t- pistol ban. And then they passed this law, which was a wolf in, in sheep's clothing, saying, hey, we're, we're going to change this firing pin requirement um, so to make it easier to comply with, but th- really what it's going to do is it's going to accelerate mm-hmm. uh, this ban. You know, if you go into a, a, a gun shop in 49 other states, you know, you, you have a, a huge selection of, of firearms where if you, you know, pistols specifically in California, you, you just don't have that. So they filed suit, and I, I just want to, um, they have the plaintiffs here listed, uh, Lana Rana. Daniel James and Lana is actually she's my neighbor um, and Lana actually uh, is uh, uh, the reason that she needs a gun a pistol that is not on the roster is that she actually has a, a physical um, uh, she has a problem with her wrist and and it's very hard for her to rack probably carpal tunnel I, I'm not <laughs> sure what it is I think she had an injury but um, it's hard for her to rack a a pistol my wife can't so she's been, yeah, it's it's very difficult for a lot of people. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Even even if you don't have an injury, a lot of people, you know, especially women, don't have that physical strength mm-hmm. to rack some of those. Nope. Some of, and some guns are harder to rack than other guns. So they, she was actually out of state with her husband and said, hey, this Smith & Wesson EZ mm-hmm. that we talked about a, a few weeks ago, which is specifically designed for, mm-hmm. one, concealment. It's small. Uh, but two, it's designed to be uh, uh, more easily uh, racked, so you can, uh, you know, use it without a whole whole lot of, you know, wrist strength. She said, "This is perfect. This fits me perfectly." Comes back to California, no can do, no can do. It's not on the, uh, it's not on the roster. Well, my so. buddy from Texas says, "Well, just get your wife one of these EZs." I go, <laughs> "You can't do it." Yeah, and these are guns that are commonly available to Americans all over the country, really. Because I don't, I don't think anyone else has a roster type thing, do they? Other no, states? We're it. I think we're it. I thought New York tried that and it didn't work out, or well, something. Little, maybe Massachusetts. It wasn't any. There've been uh, variation. Nothing like Compared what we have. To, uh, yeah, nothing like this roster. I mean, this roster is truly a pistol ban. It's a slow moving pistol ban. Mm-hmm. So some of the other uh, folks on there, uh, Danielle James, those of you who shop at Poway Weapons and Gear may know her. She runs Poway Weapons and Gear. Hannah Spousto, who's a friend of mine. Laura Schwartz. I know her. What? That's my beautiful wife. She's a car girl. Yeah. Michael Schwartz. I know him. He's right here. You're truly. Uh, Richard Bailey out in Coronado. We've had him on the show a few times. 
uh, Matt Clear. A lot of you have trained that he's with uh, Active Shooter Defense School. Uh, Justin Smith, who I believe works at Discount Gun Mart. I hope I didn't get that wrong. Uh, John Phillips, uh, Poway Weapons and Gear, uh, Poway Weapons and Gear, Cheryl Prince, Darren Prince, North County Shooting Center, Ryan Peterson, Gunfighter Tactical, San Diego County Gun Owners, of course. Of course. Um, Second Amendment Foundation. Um, those are the plaintiffs. Now, the reason I wanted to read all that off. You can put my wife on there if you like. Okay. I'm all serious because right. she's really upset that she can't get a pistol that she can shoot. Okay. All right. And uh, but the reason I wanted to read that off is, you know, we get asked a lot like, well, hey, how are all these, you know, there are all these different organizations and you know, how is everybody working together? Well, this lawsuit is a perfect example mm-hmm. uh, and it's a perfect example of how, uh, you know, different organizations, uh, companies, individuals are all coming together for a common cause. We're all working together to to get this lawsuit uh, done and filed and funded. And, you know, uh, lawsuits are very expensive. They take a lot of time. They take a lot of effort. Um, but we're all coming together to do that. But it's also an example of something else. You know, the, our Second Amendment rights truly uh, in, in, in the nation, you know, th- there, it's, there's no fight in, in, in a lot of other states, you know, um, depending on the state. Um, you, you know, we're not winning the Second Amendment fight in Alabama, you know, where 20 percent of the population has a CCW and. Uh, you know, that, that's not where the fight is. The fight for the Second Amendment to restore and protect the Second Amendment is coming right through Southern California. Mm-hmm. You know, all these lawsuits, everything that we're doing, all the cooperation that's happening, the community that we formed in, in San Diego, the fight for the Second Amendment is going right through San Diego. And that's not that's not a coincidence. You know, and it's, if it doesn't work, the rest of the states are watching California to see what happens. Well, it better work, <laughs> you know. Oh, no, I know. Yeah, because we'll, I'm just saying it's no different than smog laws. You know, we had 49 state cars and a 50 state car, and that was California. Unfortunately, we lost that war. Turns out, you know, we have cleaner air for it, so I don't have a real issue with that. Yeah. But the gun thing is the same exact thing. Yep. If they can pass these ridiculous gun laws, they're going to push it through the next 49 states. Absolutely. And, you know, people are, are fl- you know, we've talked about this many times, how 20 years ago everybody was running to Washington and Oregon to to get to their freedom. And Washington and Oregon is they're totally anti-gun at this point. Right. And then they were going to Nevada and, you know, and everybody's going to Arizona. Well, what just happened in Arizona? Arizona just voted for Biden, number one. And number two, they voted for uh, their, their new state senator, uh, who replaced a, a veteran? She was very pro Second Amendment. Their new state senator is Mark Kelly, who who is the head of an anti gun organization. Mm-hmm. So the state of California, and everybody's been walking around Southern California talking about how they're going to escape to Arizona, yeah, you know, the not. last stronghold of gun rights. Okay, well they just voted for Biden and Mark Kelly. Yeah. So running, you know, it didn't work. Didn't work. Stay it's not going to work. Stay it would, and fight. Stay and fight. But this is I wanted to show people. Th- we're in the fight. We're doing this. Yeah. You know, this is happening. So it's going to be a lot of good news. Uh, people want to know when it's going to when you know when is all this going to happen. It takes a lot of time. Um, but go to Firearms Policy Coalition. If you just go to uh, firearmspolicy.org slash Rena R E N N A. So firearmspolicy.org slash slash Rena. Uh, you can read all about this case. Join San Diego County Gun Owners and help us. Join Firearms Policy Coalition and help us. Um, but the fight is on. So get off the sidelines. Stop renting your U-Hauls and, and, and fleeing. You know, it's here, it's now. So stand up and, and uh, you know, be yeah. with us. And remember, if you leave California, they're going to charge you for three years of taxes. So you might want to think twice before you pack up and leave. Jeez, you heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're backing off. I thought it was 10 years. Three years? No, you're right. I think there is. I think it's up to 10. <laughs> That's right. All right. It's crazy. All right. We're going to take a quick break. You folks are all listening to Gun Owners Radio. Tell your friends. FM 961, AM 1170. The answer. The answer.